Hello! We're back! How you all doing? Let's see who's lurking today. Oh, good crowd. Hey, so hello to AK Karam, Darius, Jace, Infinisol, Kipples, Nobo, Positivity Bot. Ah, I wonder if you are a person or a bot. Uh, Pond Pip, Perk Pop. Oh, uh, hello. Um, our Primus, V and K, Virgo Pros, and Zymus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, sorry if I didn't call out your name. It means that Twitch has not shown it to me. Um, Great AV. Nice. We're all good then. So let's kick off. Um, sorry I wasn't around last week. I was getting a delivery at exactly the time that this would have been going on. And I definitely needed to be free for that. Uh, so we are back and we are... What are we going to do? We are going to look at a project we actually did last year. We made this little 2D... Well, we hacked together this idea for a 2D game engine. And it's like we've, we can see what a uh, game. Let me just jump over to the right machine. Move my coffee because otherwise I'm going to punch that over things. Right. So here we are. Um, we have a little game running over here. I'll bring that onto the screen in a minute. Um, so what happened last year was we made this little engine. Um, and then the Lisp Game Jam came around. I can't even have that link up here. Yeah, uh, the kind of spring 2018 one. And I thought, well, we've made this thing. Like, if we're correct, if we really have made something that's very simple to do this stuff in, we should be able to knock out a few games in the 10 days we were given, which is a lot of time, obviously, rather than just making one game. So um, I tried to do... Well, I wanted to do something like three or four. That did not happen, uh, because I ended up hacking in masses of things and all kinds of workarounds <laughs> for shit we had either got wrong or just hadn't included and all kinds of shortcomings. And since then, after that week, I went... Fuck this, and then put it down and haven't looked at it for best part. Well, kind of at least eight months now, uh, maybe ten months. So it's time to dig it up because there in April we've got another game jam going on, and I'd like to enter, but it's in April, and that'll be just around the time that we're doing a Kickstarter for the game I work on, and so I'm gonna have like no headspace. So I'm really gonna need to be able to like I might be able to spare a day or two max, probably a day. Um, so everything needs to be working. So I thought we'd dive back into this engine again. We'll find out what didn't work. Um, we'll see if anything's fixable. And just generally have a look and see how we got things so wrong. So as a reminder, uh, long ago, the general idea... What should we do? Let's have a look. Let's get, I'll bring up some of the code for this game. Or maybe actually... No, let's have a look at this. So the engine was called Daft, so that's where we are at the moment. If I just bring up a test... Um, I won't run it, but I'll show the code. So it's just test alien lisp. Okay. So the general idea was you would define these actors and their little worlds into themselves. Each of them are basically a little state machine. They have their own main entry point. And ostensibly, it's like they all run in parallel. So everything's updated in lockstep. And um, everything talks about the world relative to itself. So there isn't this, I'm at X, Y position. Um, it, it really is kind of interested in where other things are. Like if you, if you say, what's the position of that? You're going to get a relative position. If you get the rotation, it'll be a relative angle. Um, so, for example, here's the code for a bullet. It's only got one state, which is main. And all it does is it checks to see if it's collided with um, some kind of alien. and or, or if it's not in the world anymore. So if it was outside... The kind of simulated area and if so it would die otherwise it would just move forward four and that was all the code for the bullet so whenever you spawned a bullet it would just follow that repeatedly and that would be its behavior and you see something actually very similar um, in these bullets so all they're doing really is going forward um, and then when they collide with one of those ships that rarely come in um, the bullet would die and then there's complementary code in um, whatever you're shooting so in this case it was interested in alien so let's go have a look at alien Alien, in this case, was just strafing backwards and forwards um, and slowly moving forward. And what was it doing there? Oh, yeah, and then if it collided with a bullet, um, it would decrement its health. Um, yeah, and when its health was zero, yeah, it would just die. That was it. Um, and you didn't have to worry about the order things were happening um, because, because, like, each... Um, when each actor is updating, it's looking at the state of the world right now, not what the changes are. Um, so if a bullet changed its position, the alien is still going to be reading what its last position was. Uh, bug number 13. How does this fine actor define 
actor macro work? Is it calling real Lisp code or does it interpret lists? Um, what it is, is it's just, I mean, it is a macro um, and it expands to a bunch of code that the engine expects. So there's a, it expands to a method for doing the spawning. Um, there's an update method. Um, and then there's a function for each, normally there's a function for each of the states. Um, and so you can see here, it's actually a, a case statement and whatever the current state is, it then calls the respective function. In this case, there's only one state. Um, so there's only one function here. Um, and then there's just a bunch of other required code. <laughs> that's just methods that the engine needs. So it generates all this stuff um, and then yeah, and that, that's what it's for, basically. But the idea is, yeah, you just write these little brains. Um, I wonder if we've got anything here with a couple of states. No, but we'll get to some place soon. Um, there's one kind of special actor uh, called God. Um, this get One of these gets spawned automatically, and you can't spawn anymore. And they and this one just keeps track of... Like, yeah, it's the actor that spawned at the beginning and is allowed to spawn everything else. And when you say spawn, um, like alien here, this is how you create something. And if... If something is to spawn, like we have a ship in here somewhere, like the, the code here saying, hey, when the mouse button is left or we press the um, zero button, the, the zero button on the uh, gamepad, then we're going to spawn a bullet. Um, when you spawn something, you spawn something for your own position. Or in this case, seeing as it says 0, 040, it's spawning that 0, 040 relative to it. So whatever direction it's facing, it'll be 40 pixels, 40 units in front. Um, T Sandstorm says, I've been looking through the Keppel code and I cannot for the life of me figure out what Defun Plus macro does. Can anyone explain it to me? I can. Uh, Defun Plus is, actually, let's just go and have a look at it. Uh, where is it? The works, Keppel core. It's everything. Everything fucking uses it, doesn't it? So FBOs. FBOs, there's Defarm Plus. Defarm Plus um, is a wrapper um, around Defarm, um, which also allows me to have my own custom um, de declarations. So normally you can do things like, hey, declare type of um, FBO to, to like, so declare the type of this variable to be of, this, of the object FBO. Um, but I also wanted to be able to do, let's see if I've got some of this profile. Here we go. You can see here, here's a function. Um, in this case, it's defn, which is actually typed. It's a shame I haven't got for defun plus as well. Let's see if I can find a defun plus with a profile in it. No. But it allows the same thing anyway. So what it does, is it allows me to write this profile here and then it'll um, wrap some code around the body. Uh, so let's go, actually, let's just go find this. Where's defun plus? Defun plus, boop. Um, it uses pass body plus. This is, okay, what does this do? Um, yes, it goes through the, it passes the body. There's a, there's a um, I think if I remember correctly, Yes, this is a function from Alexandria um, that can take the body of a function and split it into its components. So a documentation string, declarations, and the actual body code. Um, and then we go and process the uh, declarations. And we, there's just a whole bunch of stuff here that we look through. Um, yeah, it just allows you to write your own declares. It's pretty hacky. The reason I have it is that um, I want to be able to um, recompile Keppel with profiling, um, and it uses that to inject code at the f the start and end of every function. Um, and I can also parameterize that on some things as well. Um, so that's roughly that. Sorry if I didn't explain that very well, but I'm happy to go into more detail. Um, AK Karan is saying, how do you prefer preserve the previous state for the updates using some immutable stuff? Um, yeah, well, no, um, it's very mutable, but you're essentially just double buffering all the state. So you have one big buffer, which is the current state, and then you're copying everything into a new buffer. Um, and so we've got kind of like two copies of every instance and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
And so, yeah, you're writing that in. And then we upload all that stuff to the kind of GPU and we use instancing and all this kind of stuff to get some kind of performance. We'll definitely be looking at um, improving that in the future, but it works pretty well. Um, okay, so let's not worry about FBOs. Let's get back to this. So yes, this is the rough idea is you would have this silly little actor language and you would make some things and the idea was this should be kind of nice to write uh, because you're not having to worry about order of things and it's all very focused on itself and things like that. It came from a like an old thing I, I played with when I was a kid called Div Game Studio and it was just like, yeah, you wrote everything as these kind of concurrent um, concurrent actors and I had no idea what concurrency was or anything like that. I just, I was able to make things with that that, was, that felt really cool um, and it was just a different way of looking at stuff. So yeah, like I said, I made two game entries for two entries for the last game jam. Um, it was painful, and I want to look through some stuff. But before we do that, um, let's just bring those up because you know it's nice to have a little bit of graphics on the screen before we just start reading loads of stuff. This was Orb. Um, the idea of this is you, um, I can press buttons to cycle the colors of the orb and myself. And if um, let me just do this, if the orb is the same color as the beams that are coming across the then everything is fine so I'll, I'll stop trying to play and explain at the same time these beam these walls are going to come across if the color matches um then it doesn't hurt you that's it and you've got to make sure that neither um the orb nor your ship gets hurt and of course they're out of phase so every time i change um to red it's green when i'm green it's blue when i'm blue it's red etc and every now and again, one of those bastard ships comes in and um, they destroy the orb as soon as they touch it. So they come in quite slowly. So if I turn myself to green here and then I change the orb to green, you'll see that the walls pass through without hurting anything. And I can pass through there. And then blue is going to come along and I can switch to blue so I can fly through it. And so this was just a general idea. It's to see how long you can survive game. Um, And yes, it gets rather fiddly when a lot of things are going on. Um, whoops. Yeah, like that. And as you can see, when we're switching modes, we throw out little particles. And we've got particles of the right color coming from the orb in the center. And the walls themselves leave little sparkles. And when they die, like when they crash, they all disappear and they all just fade out. And obviously this one has um, lots of silly colors coming out of it, which is kind of cool. So that's the general idea of that game. It's against not super complicated but we'll go through well it's, it's not super complicated conceptually um but it was a bit of a fuck to make some of this stuff it was harder than it definitely should have been the main uh, problem was with the first game i made which i'll actually bring up this is the one i started the week with and i thought this was gonna um be yeah i thought we had what, what am i looking for what's it called uh bomber chap there we go it's a bomber man clone Darius say I don't get it, where is the pizza? Man, there we go. It's been a while since I heard about the pizza. Yeah, we should do another pizza related game. Okay, Cram saying, I've seen such a DSL for drawing stuff. It was um, always useful to think in terms of your own coordinates. It feels like it would be, right? Um, there's definitely some places it's not. Um, we did this thing where we went, let's be anal about the um, API to begin with. We're saying this is the only way you can think about things. Because as soon as you can get world coordinates, it's easy just to pussy out and then just like start using those instead. So I'm like, no, we'll lock it down to being local and all this kind of stuff. That caused a bunch of issues. We'll get to those, I expect. Um, so bomber chap, let's run it and see what comes up. Okay, there we go. So we end up with this. And I wonder if... Yeah, let's see if we can give you the really irritating music for a while. Is that... Can you hear that music by any chance? Oh yeah, I think it's playing. It is very annoying. Um... And it's got this shake that's happening all the time as well. <laughs> Luckily, I can't hear it at the moment. I'll mute, I'll mute it for you in a second. Says, oh, you're not hearing the no music? Then this is lying to me. 
it's saying the HD rocket is being fed um, to the stream. But to be honest, if you can't hear it, that's actually a small mercy. So, um, oh, now you can hear something? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, again, all of this is um, free art, free music, whatever. I have no talent in that kind of area, so just... Um, this is a very large level. I'm actually going to kill myself so I can get to a smaller level. Um... Come on, one more bomb. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna spay for. The, I'm gonna bring down the music now because it does get. In my mind, it might just be that I had to play test it for ages, but it got super annoying. Um, okay, so, it, so obviously there's pickups as well, so that gives you an extra bomb, which I can't use right now because I'll kill myself. Um, but yeah, if I can do that and then that and then. Whoa. Um, and then this pickup is for speedy shoes. You can go a little bit faster. Um, and then, yeah, more pickups. There's some pickups for longer flames as well. Um, it, the screen shake is not in sync with the music. No. <laughs> if it looks like it, that's great, but it really isn't. Um... Yeah, it's uh, it's not. I just picked some. I picked the numbers so it looked like it was in sync, and just went right. That'll do. <laughs> this was a game jam, so it was just like, pfft. oh, it does go out of sync. That's for sure. Right, but we've got like basic animations and camera shake and all this kind of stuff. So we'll get into that, and it doesn't it doesn't seem completely heinous. Um, Let's just finish this off, and then we'll get to the thing. But but getting this to work was a colossal pain. Um, oh yeah, there's a pickup that actually makes the flames longer. So if I do this, you'll see that there's two flames on either side of that now. We should be able to anyway. We've also got all the um, all these blocks are flashing, so they've all got animation as well. And like say, every single one of these blocks is running its own code, so it's a separate thing. Um, so as you can imagine, that could get, like, there could be performance problems, and I did find some while we're doing it. Like, we tested this on our original, um, I'll turn the music down. Um, we tested this when we were doing our original test, and I think we had, like, 20,000, 30,000 things on screen or something like this. Um, but the engine really likes large numbers of the same instance. It does not like large varieties of different instances. Which we'll have to address. I mean, like, we, we hacked this together, so it's kind of fine, but... Yes, it, um... It has issues. So we're going to kind of look into that. We're going to look into um, where the problems came from. We're going to look at some of the horrible hacks that were dumped in. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what the plan is. Oh, I'm on the wrong machine again. One second. Um, doot, doot, doot. Now, how do I... Okay. That's kind of annoying. So, I had this issue before. And I couldn't get it to come back to... Oh, there we go. That's rather strange. But alright. I think we're... I think we're back in. Uh, guess the bombs exploding don't trigger other bombs. No. I always like that about the old one. Oh, did the bombs trigger bombs? I didn't recall that. I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to add it. Um, actually, we could do that now, that now as an exercise if we wanted. I think, could we do that? Yes, possibly. Let's go have a look. Uh, so we go to bombing chat, because the idea was we were able to change these things on the fly, right? Um, so let's look at bomb. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, this is going to get into some of the some of the issues we had. Um, yes, maybe we will leave this because that actually reminds me of one of the problems. So, first, let's go have a look for that shake. Um, start shake. Okay, let's just do nil here. Does that get rid of it? Yes, good. Okay. 
So a few things I want to do. I want to I want to recap some like learn some of the code again because I want to know how I did the um, this nice little sweeping light effect here. I mean it'll it'll be simple, but I want to know how I did it in a system which doesn't know but doesn't have kind of much global information. I think the answer is we hacked it in using global information. Um, but to start with, let's just go back to our engine daft, and I went through. Um, I looked at the commits. Oh yes, ten months ago. Look at that. Um, and I found that like master will have been the last thing that we did um, together on the streams, and then there's all of this nonsense um, with things that happened during the um, ten days of the um, in the ten days of the jam. One of the big things I added, which was actually fantastic, was I added order independent transparency, and that is that was huge for the game. Um, so we won't go through like the actual code of that this because it really needs its own episode, but it was phenomenal. I'll see if I can actually find. Oh no! Don't do that. I'll go back to this again. Hmm. Why does that happen? Okay, so I need to stop that. And let's just restart this. Bring up the bomber chap. Oh, it's actually interesting. We didn't restart last time, so it can load multiple games at the same time. That's good to know. Global information for the win. Yeah, it got us through. Um, Jason saying, yeah, order independent, independent transparency wouldn't be neat. It was really cool. It was one of those times where I set up like, I set up three spheres that were transparent and I had them like the, I had the, I did, did a bunch of different techniques. Like the, the order, independent, order independent transparency paper I used was really good because it listed, it, it kind of gave pseudocode for earlier techniques. So I implemented like three different techniques from like the 70s or 80s or whatever it was onwards and then their implementation and it was absolutely amazing how similar it was to ground truth like to doing it having to sort it and do everything in order i was really impressed um okay so hopefully this time i can do run and i'm going to set full screen to nil in fact i'm just going to go and default that here so i don't fuck this up again um full screen is defined but never used oh yeah it's down here full screen <laughs> Okay, run, and put it over there. So hopefully, yes, good, right. So now I can, yeah, neat. Um, yes, let's see if we can find that order in the pandemic transparency. Um, let's see if I can find the one that was really useful. Casual effects, yes. This was, definitely the person that got me going there's there's going to be links here to the paper um but warning um when i implemented their thing exactly from um crt uh, t tantrum um when i ordered implemented things exactly it was in their paper i had real issues i just couldn't get it to work exactly right um, but there is an implementation done by NVIDIA. Like they have sample code with it working. Um, and I can't remember where that is, but I will try and find that for you because it is. Oh, it might actually be in here. Basically, they, they do have. Yeah, they do have some code somewhere uh, which you can use as a reference, reference implementation. There were small changes between what the official paper had and it got it completely working and it was golden. Um, so yes, right, okay. Um, that was a good thing, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to try and review all the stuff that um, kind of didn't work. Um, because I just dumped in um, some commit, like the commits I wanted to review um, and then sorted them into some vague categories uh the further down like this is oldest this is newest oldest newest oldest um newest so we're going more recent through the uh, week of the 10 days of development okay so things that actually did work okay um i moved animations around to what actual code owned that um 
some things were missing, like lots of symbols were missing from the package, so I had to do that. There was some clamping, there were some uh, extra features added to the camera. Separate collision masks and origin taken. Oh yeah, being able to set an origin for a sprite, so where it's actually ostensibly drawn from, rather than always in the center or always from the corner. I think it was always in the center to begin with. Um, basic sound support. Um, yeah, that I think the implementation is pretty bad if I remember correctly, but it worked for the for that for getting the games out, so it will do for now. I'm gonna go and rewrite that at some point. Um, Actor kinds got their own uh, instance stream, so we have um, we're using um, instancing to draw everything, but of course we each instance needs its own position and lots of other information as well, like what frame they're on and all this kind of stuff. So to do that, we have um, instance. What is it? Um, the term just walked straight out of my head. But, but yeah, per instance data. We have we have big arrays of per instance data that are um, like streams streamed up to the um, GPU, and then the vertex shader can position things and all that kind of crap. Um, before that was all in one big stream, um, and now we've split it into lots of different ones. And the main reason for that, if I think, if I remember, was um, we can have. Um, static actors as well as dynamic ones. So if I go to the bomber chap um, thing, oh yeah, someone complimented that name. That was not my name. That was actually the name of the sprites, uh, like the generic bomber man type sprites I am using here. Uh, we're called bomber chap, which is great. Um, let's have a look. So what did I just say I was going to do, Chris? Um, Oh yeah, static things. Static. So I think, let's see if I can find, so define actor. Oh god, we're going to come back to that stuff. Um, you know what, maybe I don't have any static actors. Oh no, I do. Um, these actors have no body code, they have no states, and as such they're considered static. Um, that means that, um, oh, apparently, Jay's was saying, uh, probably on my end, but the stream totally cut off for me there for a bit. Oh, um, running fine everywhere else. Oh, cool. Thanks, guys. That's good to know. Sorry, Jace, It's you again. <laughs> um, yes, if, an, if a thing is static, we don't need to update its collision information. We don't need to update. There's basically a bunch of stuff that we have to re render out when we're doing a lot of other things. And we can avoid that if we know it's static. We just do it once and then it's used over many frames. So that's cool. Um, actually, here we can see one wall tile. So I'm guessing these are movable blocks here. These can't animate. And so they're defined as static. So then, like, yeah, there, there's the way we do the. If I'm, again, it's been a long time since we've done this. The way I remember us doing collisions. Um, was that you can you can ask if you're colliding with any instance of another kind of actor, and what that um, so how we implement that is we have big right now we just have big textures, and we render out a um, a collision mask of we render all of one kind at once because we're doing the kind of um, using instancing for the batching. We render out all the collision masks for that, but for, for all of the instances. And then anything else that's rendering can look up into that mask and see if they're overlapping something. Um, yes, quite memory expensive. We're very memory expensive if you start making the world big enough. Um, very parallel. Uh, but also, yeah, it has a bunch of issues. But you don't, we don't want to be doing that every single frame. Um, not because it's slow on the GPU, it's because we have to push the data up there. Um, that's actually the issue. It's just, it's like, even being careful with Lisp, it's very easy to make things slow. And um, part of our goal was just to allow us to write these little actors, like, hey, define an actor, and this is just how it behaves, and that's all fine. Don't think about how many of them you're making and stuff and where they are and how to batch them together. So, um, yeah, you get pretty shitty behavior pretty quickly. Um, we could do much more intelligent batching. That might be something we do in the future, but for now, that's where we are. Again, here's a floor tile. So all of these floor tiles are individual actors as well. Um, yes. So that's cool. 
Two reviews, so that went okay. Um, basic sound support, actor kinds, instant streams. That was it. Yeah, originally we had everything as um, cubes. Now they're all quads. Um, in the very first episode, we said we used cubes just in case. It would be like, hey, we kind of cool to be able to go into a 3D view and see everything. It'd be kind of nice to see the side of stuff. Um, bug number 13 saying, that's a lot of actors. Yep, that was the idea, was we would just kind of batch things and do things in certain ways to, um, yeah. It's acting well together. Is that a pun? How dare you? Get out. But please stay, because we love you. Right. Uh, resize on start, that's basic, yeah, stuff, just handling the resize properly. Add ship shape, that was the system I used for doing builds. Hey, here's a, <laughs> here's a top tip that Chris still hasn't managed to internalize properly. If you're going to do a game jam with Common Lisp and you plan on shipping an exe rather than just the code, the first thing you should do is get a black screen, like a window to open with a black screen, and then make like test your process for building for all the platforms you're going to build for so for me that was windows mac linux because that was a major pain in the ass on the last days it was a pain in the ass in it's basically been a problem every game jam i've done i find bugs in my in my shipping code and it's just like why didn't i test this sooner i mean if you test it the first day then you can do xe builds every single day and it's fine but i i still haven't learned that lesson um, yes, we had some internal uh, functions for position and rotation, which were dirt slow. Um, so a bunch of the um, engine stuff internally has had to take that into account. Um, and then zero out a load of um, kind of allocated um, foreign arrays before use. And then the rest of stuff is things we need to look at. Uh, there's just horrendous hacks in certain places that need fixing. Um, all of this stuff I just kind of need to look at and see how bad things are. And these ones are ones I'm almost 100% sure are um, failures of our original model. And um, yeah, we need, to, we, need to, <laughs> we need to know what to do with those. Um, so I think that's where we start. We're just going to start going from the bottom of the list up and... Try and find out how this should fit in with our API and what we can do about it. So, um, what should we do? So there's this commit. I'm going to go and bring up the commits and search for that. Here we go. Right, so this was the one that changed it. So we added... Um, Just make sure I've got that right. To review. Okay. So see the code comments. All right. Okay. Um, this is at this point, I was saying this kind of feels like the API is breaking. Yes. This was when I was having to hack in more uh, kind of direction stuff. So let's. Um, Tell you what, let's get rid of Bomber Chap. Let's get our other uh, simpler example up and then we can fuck around with it a bit easier. Um, so let's just ditch that and bring up this and bring up, what is this thing called? It's um, Daft. That's it, that's the name of the engine. What's going on over here? So, Raladan says, Oh, I missed your question earlier. Sorry, off topic, but do you have an open init.el for Emacs? Maybe on GitHub. Um, I do these days, actually. Um, yes, as Darius, I think, has linked it out. Let's see if that's the one I expect it to be. Yes, that's more recently what I've been playing with. Um, is using what was it? Is it use package? Yeah, use package um, to try and clean some stuff up. And it says, to be honest, I'm asking because I'm re currently really frustrated with use package. <laughs> I've only just got onto it. So basically, yeah, like um, 
like my dot emacs on this machine is a complete fucking mess um and i was getting more and more like it was just becoming a massive pain in the ass so i started on my laptop trying to use use package and structure things in a sensible way it's worked okay for some stuff but i haven't spent the time to move it across yet um i i do want it to get to the point where it's like works on windows and mac and linux and then i can forget about it again for a while chase is saying if you drop by the lisp discord there are people who might be able to help out with the package use nonsense that's a good good point Um, all right. Let's see. So, um, let's go into Daft. Let's go and go into the test code. Yeah, so we haven't got a, a, a very structured thing. It's going to take a few episodes to work through everything and start cleaning up this API. Um, if you're down for that, we'll definitely do that. Um, we can just do that together on the streams. Um, yeah. That's, but that's what I've been thinking about doing anyway. So now hopefully I can just compile this and ignore warnings and just say, is it just run or is it daft? Yes. And full screen is false by default, so that's good. So daft start. So good, we get a little spaceship here and there's bullets everywhere. We can shoot and we can thrust around, that's cool. And that is spaceships we can shoot. And those are a lot of bullets coming down. So I'm actually going to reduce the frequency of those. Let's go and see what we've got. So there's a spin emitter here. That's probably what's doing it. So fun call spin counter. Spin counter is a stepper that fires every two seconds. So let's say it's every 10 seconds. And we can just leave that. Oh, that was also the other fun thing with us doing the um, the textures for collisions. It meant that we could have pixel-perfect collisions between different actors, which was really nice. Okay, so this was saying compass deer move. Was that something we have used in here yet? Yes, it is. Uh, this kind of feels like the API is breaking. So the idea was that everything was focused about... Um, you um, and then so you would rotate and then you would um, you could rotate and it was always relative to you so let's, if you see like turn left and where is it um, let's just find the ship's behavior because it's easier to explain with that oh no it's not <laughs> we've got set angle from analog <laughs> alright that doesn't really help but anyway, yeah, you would say turn left, turn right by a certain number of degrees. And um, yeah, so it's always relative to the direction you're facing. But that has um, that has its own problems because a lot of times you do want to refer to things um, based on the angle on the screen. So we had this idea of a compass angle where up was kind of like your north and then you're just a number of degrees from that. So that's like standard global rotation. Um, so the fact that we needed this suggests that we can't have the kind of limitation that we're kind of setting for ourselves. And so let's see where compass angle deer was used here. Um, oh, it was, wait, what? I thought we saw that a second ago. What the fuck? No, it's not used in here. Okay. Um, let's look at base, which was part of bomber chap. Where is it used in here? Okay, yes. Um, when you're moving the chap in a certain direction. Oh yeah, that's funny. So the thing there was, um, we have our little dude, and he's standing up, right? But now we want him to move in different directions, but we don't want to rotate him. Um, and the approach otherwise is like, you've got to rotate him, but then you've got to rotate the sprite counter to the direction you're turning, which is disgusting. So... The f th this was just a sign that we're having to add more and more functions that are based on compass angles. There's probably a few of those here, yeah. Compass angle move, compass direction, 
Um, Compass deer move. There's these different functions that are all based on global rotation. And it makes perfect sense that you need them, um, but it doesn't fit into our model. So that's something we really need to consider um, how we're going to handle. Like, if we're going to expose global rotation, are we, should we expose global position as well? And how should we do that? And, like, how do you encourage using the local stuff first and all that kind of shit? Okay, so let's jump back to um, to review, and we'll turn this into a specific thing to do. Um, we clearly, oops, we cleanly, clearly need a global rotation uh, for cases like a chap dude. Um, Walking different directions without, um, what do I want to say? So we can walk different directions without rotating um, the image. So that's the first one, we'll get rid of that. Um, more compass move funks, that seems to be exactly the same problem to be honest. Um, let's get back to test alien, bring up the commits, yes, yeah, save. Again, yeah, it's just another compass angle funk, so I think that's exactly the same thing. Um, so we can remove that. And then there's add last frame, next frame, and get frame. We'll look at those in a second. But we should check the chat. Um, so Jace is pimming the Lisp Discord. It's a good place to be. Um, I am available there occasionally. I am very, very slow to respond. Uh, you'll often see me kind of online because um, the game I'm working on at my day job has a Discord. So there's a bunch of people in there I'm generally chatting to. And um, yeah, but I, I do get around to the Lisp stuff eventually. It's just on second priority. Actually, talking about other stuff I haven't got around to yet, I'm still working on the type system um, for... Uh, the data processing um, statically typed Lisp stuff that we're going to be looking at. That is going to come in a while. Um, I'm definitely not there yet. I'm, I'm trying to implement something akin to Rust traits, um, which isn't in itself very difficult, but um, I'm trying to develop this library for defining type systems and the project that's using the library at the same time. So finding where the solution should live kind of bounces backwards and forwards and there's a lot of API design shit. So I, I'm getting there. I'll, I'll have something. As soon as I get something that's working, it, it kind of, then we can have a look at that problem again as well, which would be a lot of fun. But this we need to get done before the game jam. Okay. Go have a look at this commit. Okay, so there is a function for last frame, set frame, get frame. See, the thing about this is it just seems, it seems like we're trying to get the ID of the frame rather than using the other functions we already had for it. What is this? This is the user API frame control dot list. Let's go and have a look at the latest version of that then. That's not where it is. Hmm. Source. User API frame control. Oh yeah, and the, the naming of the files and the d directory structure now is a complete mess as well. Like there was like constantly shift between what's meant to be internal and what's public because it was just, yeah, throwing shit at the wall in the panic during the um, game jam. Okay, so originally we had next frame, which would advance the frame. Oh no, we had advanced frame. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, last frame, next frame, get frame. So what is this? Next frame is setting the animation frame. (laughs) 
Okay, maybe this one's actually fine because these ones are for setting the frame. It's just, yeah, going forward frames or back frames. I'm not sure what the difference is between advanced frame though. Why is this not suitable? We're going advancing by a certain amount, which would surely just be one. Um, let's have a look. Compare advanced frame and next frame. Oh, here we go. Like I was saying that uh, Defun Plus and having profile, you can see profile here. Um, and when this expands, it won't expand into anything interesting. Um, but when I load um, Keppel.perf, which is very janky but works for my purposes, um, it'll inject all kinds of code here and at the end. It's quite useful. Okay. An Emacs Lisp channel in the Discord would make sense, Chase. That, that sounds good. Emacs or Stack Exchange is excellent as well, yeah. Yeah, it took me a while to get into use package, but I just, I needed something more maintainable than what I had, because I had like, on, well, I do currently have on like multiple machines with different Emacs configs on them. Because I'll invariably copy something over and then it's like, oh yeah, aren't, there's something mac specific thing over here and i just hack that in um or whatever so it's um yeah i want to unify all that stuff together okay so this stuff looks very similar in fact it's the same as last frame but not the same as next frame as advanced frame Let's have a look. If range, blah, blah, blah. If range, second range. Oh, interesting. <laughs> what? That's interesting. Hmm. I remember seeing something for this. Anim length. Yes, yeah, so this seems to be... Oh man, it's my, my head hurt a little. There's a difference here between... Okay, so next frame seems to be the range is the first thing you specify is which frame, and then the second thing you specify is um, the length. Whereas here you're advancing and the first thing you specify is the first frame, and the second thing you specify is the second frame? Yes, that because we're doing a subtract here, second range minus start frame. So the difference here is, um, ranges, start frame, end frame, ranges, um, yeah, start frame, number of frames. Well, those are terrible naming schemes for a start. Um, so we'll have to deal with that. Oh, we also have set frame, which just allows you to set the frame directly, obviously clamped within certain bounds. And what frame we're on is actually a float. Um, for reasons, we can get back to it another time. And get frame, yeah, just actually just returns the frame itself. <sighs> so, th so there, there are a couple of things here. The first one is just that the um, names of um, frame um, animation functions are super vague. All right, and the second one is that. Um, Well, if you can say advance frame and get frame, like if you, if... this seems fine, actually. I mean, I think getting and setting those things explicitly is all right. It, like an animation is your own resource. You don't set it on someone else. Um, everything you're doing always applies to self. So I think that's fine, actually. So it's really only that the naming is crap. Okay, so th those are... 
these are things to fix for sure. Um, and then we've just got to go through, again, we're just going to go through various things and do the same stuff. Any list related breakfast food? <laughs> just getting random list recommendations now. Oh, actually, here's a list recommendation. I saw a... Well, I'm, I'm almost finished watching a talk that I thought was very interesting. Um, this is... Let's see if this is going to work. Yeah. Um... This is a talk from HanmainCon 2016. Um, and again, it's about uh, large scale systems. It's a chap from Naughty Dog talking about how they do stuff there uh, with like a. And I just think it's really cool. It's very pragmatic. It's based on the idea that they have mostly um, seasoned developers. Um, and so there's like low hand holding. But one of the interesting things is like. In the first 15 minutes, you'll hear a conversation about Lisp because obviously Naughty Dog, when they were doing. Uh, was it Jack and Daxter that was written in Goal? Or was it Crash Bandicoot? Yeah, their very earliest games, anyway, they had a custom Lisp language um, that they were using for um, for writing the whole game. And Racket and Scheme are still used internally for a lot of their gameplay scripting code um, and a lot of data definition stuff because, they again, they like macros and all this kind of stuff. But it, it's kind of... And it, it's just in a very practical way. So, it, again, I think it's a really interesting talk. Um, because when you listen to some of the small details for things, they kind of gloss over some stuff, but you hear like just realities of development kind of stuff. And, and to be honest, generally the Handmade Hero talks are kind of really good anyway, just getting these big chunks of information from actual developers on the kinds of problems they have. And I, it's recommended that, because obviously they're going to be talking about problems, and it's there's a kind of implicit understanding that these people aren't stupid they don't have teams of hundreds of stupid people so when this problem has evolved when they've got themselves in this really messy situation and some of the couple of the, well one of the talk in particular talks about an absolute nightmare of a situation they've got them into it's really worth thinking about how sane people sitting in a room talking to each other like like we chat on here could reach um, design decisions which led them down the road into these problems and it's really cool so I just recommend I recommend watching all those talks but um but yeah that one's nice from a Lisp point of view um Crash Bandicoot cool and there was a different Lisp language for Jack and Dexter nice um I've heard that Crash 1 would break the CD drives if played too much what that's nuts there are a few famous games on PS1 um, that embedded Lisp interpreters. Are cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I remember Goal from the um, from Naughty Dog um, being in their early games, and then uh, yeah, then they switched out and they've been using Racket a lot, which is cool. They they seem very happy with it. They're not wanting to throw it away yet. But obviously, most stuff is written in C for good reasons. Now, what's the next thing? So. This is all stuff that when I bumped into it, it was like, okay, it's probably, it, like, this probably is an issue, but I haven't, ha I didn't have a chance to really review it because I was just going through all these commits before the stream. So add depth to the user API. So let's go have a look. Um, da -da 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 Where do we go? Okay, so we've added these functions down here, set depth and depth, um, which is just getting the Z position of the thing. And I need I'm, I, I want to know if the getter function is used in anything. Let's go have a look at that quickly. Um, oh no, so now we're back in an older commit. This is source user API depth. Let's do that. Okay. All right, yeah, but that's not going to tell us if anyone's using it in the other games that I've already made. So let's go and have a look at uh, Bomber Chap is the one that's most likely to have these issues. Let's have a look at depth. So we can see that default depth is set in a load of places, but nothing actually calling the depth function. Okay, let's go have a look at Orb, which was the other game. 
No. Okay. So there's a reason I want to think about this is we haven't so far allowed absolute positioning. Um, and this is setting an absolute position. You're just setting wherever you want to, what depth you want to be at. Now, currently we don't have anything that navigates those depths, but if we do, then it makes sense that the um, it behaves like the other position stuff. Like when we say move in a certain direction, it would be better to like, wouldn't it make more sense for us to lift, like rise through layers and then drop down through layers and it'd be relative to where you are? So, um, I think what we want to look at here, and this might all change because we might decide that fuck it, we do need absolute positions, and that would be a very sensible conclusion to come to. But if we want to keep to this silly goal that we had originally, let's see if we can find another way of doing it. So, um, depth, um, get a setter, uh, absolute. Should they be relative? Cool. Um, let's see if we go back to that commit as well and see if there's anything else. Is there some discard stuff here? I'm not sure what this is related to. This is my cube FS. That will probably has changed. I'm not going to worry about that too much. And yes, there's some actually using the positions. This is probably, is this in the shader code? Yes. Cool. And there's a default depth flag, so like in the globals somewhere. So there's that. As uh, public state, there's just things using this information. Let's go have a look, see if there's anything else. Okay. So, no, I think this is, this is all just defining the stuff and passing it around inside the engine. That's fine. So it's really just the fact that, okay, lots of hackery here. We don't have order independent transparency. Oh, that came later. Uh, we're using discard until then. Yes, that looked horrible, uh, as it would. Uh, depths from 0 to 100, with being 100 being furthest away. Okay. Um, let's just take that down. Take that and drop it here. Cool. All right, next bit. Bug number 13, maybe a bit off topic. Or oh, keep coming with the off topic stuff. I love it. We're, we're just, we've got plenty of time. So this is great. Um, is there a common Lisp available for Raspberry Pi running NetBSD? That's a good question. Let's see what the other folks say. Um, Is putting your objects in someone's database a euphemism? I need to scroll back to find out what all that was about. Um, so not SBC. Uh, oh, right. Okay. That's good. Does not support ARM on NetBSD. Oh, that's nice to know. Um, other than that, I don't know. I know that C Lisp has, uh, can run on lots of platforms, but I have experienced some crashes with it. Yeah, I, I would stay away from C Lisp in general, to be honest. If you want a, a Lisp that compiles to C, use ECL. Um, yeah, I, I don't trust C Lisp these days. Arsus, AK Karam, if it is, then it has to be euphemism for something bad. Uh, bug number 13, the, Darius is saying to bug number 13, I think. Think that you should be able to get ECL running on NetBSD, but I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> Me and Darius have just as much information on that problem, it seems. Nobody's lemons are saying you can probably run Pico Lisp on bare metal even on Pi. That's that's actually there was Pico Lisp, there was also something um There was a micro lisp, right? That was like running on the Arduino. Yeah. This is something I really need to try at some point because it's really cute. You've got this little scripting language, little lispy scripting language that can run on like that hardware. It seems crazy to be having a um, GC down there, but sure, you know, it, there was a GC on on weaker machines than this for sure. Um, that's really cool, and it just seems like they're putting such effort into it, you know. 
I really hope this project is still going. I mean, look at this. This is dope. All these resources. Yeah, I'd love to play with that sometime. I'll drop that in the chat, because why not? Boop. Boop. So what do we got? Um, there's also Clasp, um, which implements common list on LLVM. So maybe that works on ARM BSD. That might. I'm. Like, I still feel like I, isn't Clasp still a bit rough around the edges? If you're not really interested in, you know, like doing a bit of debugging when things go wrong. Um, it, uh, that's a long time since I tried to use it, so um, I could be very wrong at this point. Darius is saying, Ulysp for Arduino seems very active. That's awesome. Pico Lisp does look very cool, though. It just seems like a lot of fun. Um, AK Cram says he can't even get class running on x86. Ah, yeah. that That's the experience I remember. <laughs> I, remember. I think I'll go a little further, though. Okay, unless you know a good bit of LLVM, it'd be tough to uh, configure cross-compilation. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Um, bug number 13 saying I've written some macro heavy CL code which I dropped directly after writing it okay um, yeah class would take a while to compile but that kind of makes sense I mean like LVM and everything's all kind of tightly packed in there as well isn't it I could be wrong Great talk about machiney level Lisp implementation. Ooh, that's interesting. Easy AT oh, it's a maker Lisp machine, an easy AT CPU card running bare metal Lisp. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, that's fun. I think I actually saw that come on, but I never got around to watching it. That's fun though. Um. I want to see if Kepler run a class since it's 98% ANSI compliant now, but I was having trouble with ASAMP. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, hey, but did you actually get um, Kepler itself running? Because like you don't need um, you don't need ASAMP for Kepler. That'd be really cool if that was working. I would love to get like because they were working on lots of optimization stuff when the compiler gets a little further along. I would love to play with that because I bet we could um, get access to. Because it's LLVM, we could emit bytecode ourselves, which would give us the same kind of thing that we get with SBCL from like emitting assembly instructions. A little higher up, but it would be good enough for implementing some stuff. Should be a lot of fun. Oh, Jace, did you watch that talk today? The um, yeah, the the Jupyter notebook and all the uh, molecule stuff they were doing. That was super dope. I think most of the compiler isn't really clasped, though. What do you mean? Like, they're using Sickle and all that stuff, which makes a lot of sense. Um, that's really cool to actually see the like that project being used in that way. Um, it's really cool. Right, where do we get to? Um, yes, the hackery was re related to discard. That's fine. Fine. Okay, this one is probably okay. I mean, like, all the implementations are likely to be bad, but that's not really what I'm after right now. Um, this was the origin. So this gets um, exposed on the fine actor. So if we go to, I think, even our um, test alien... As depth, no, no depths in here. Okay, everything's on the same depth. That's fine. Um, so yeah, so if we go to base. I think was the function. Yeah, this is the file we were looking at in Bomber Chat. If we look for yes, we have default depth. Um, so when a th when a thing of um, say dying chap is spawned, it's spawned at depth twenty. Um, and you can see here, there's lots of different things. Depth 10, depth 3, blah, 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 blah. And that was really useful for just saying, okay, floor tiles are down the bottom, wall tiles are up the top, explosions are at this level. Um, this information is obviously really important for the transparency as well. Um, so yeah, all of that kind of stuff. Um, 
I don't mind the default depth so much. I mean, it is another um, case where we're specifying an absolute value, you know? Um, but there's not really much you can do when you haven't got anything to be relative to, you know? Like, like unless you're going to have your depth, the responsibility for your depth to be coming from the thing that spawned you, which does make sense from a... Um, what was I going to say? Like when you when you spawn, you can set the relative position from you to the thing that you're spawning. So it's like, hey, it's ten units in front of me and slightly to the left. You could also specify whether it's higher or lower than you. And we can say that uh, the uh, that God is at a set position. God's at zero zero zero. Uh, or God's at zero zero. So if and if it was zero, we could you could position yourself relative to that and it would be okay. Um, I don't really know how loading works in this. Um, level button. What's the level button? Okay, when the key down, J. Oh yeah, so you can jump to the next level. Fair enough. Um, that looks ugly as butts as well. I'll have to check out what was going on there. Uh, this file is a is a mess, which is great. It gives us lots of things to look at. Um, doop, doop, doop. Let's have a look. Um, check next level. What does that mean? So, next level. We'll call next level, and where is that? It's probably in level.lisp. Here it is. So it loads the levels, it sorts them based on string name, it finds our current one and gets the next one, and it changes to that level. Let's go and see what that involves. Um, oh yeah, as God, that's interesting. We'll have to get around to that as well. Um, reset wins, kill level tiles, spawn a specific level, and then change state. So if you were spawning a level, let's just ignore all the other problems and just go to this. Um, this basically means you're walking through the, the level description and spawning things based on... Um, I never actually showed you this, but the um, the way the levels are defined for Bomber Chap is like this. So um, hashes are unbreakable walls, stars are um, breakable walls, uh, B is a um, bomb power-up, S is a speed power-up, um, yeah, the dots are blocks that contain a random power-up, and what else? There was question marks as well. They, they, they spawn a box that keeps on changing what it is, just keeps on strobing through the different possibilities. Um, so let's have a look. I know that he's trying to compile compl class now. Cool. Go for it, man. Um, let's have a look. They're writing a custom compiler for most of their clo for most of their code. Um, Clasp isn't self-hosting. Most of it is written with two other implementations. I mean, is the goal to get itself hosting? What's the... Yeah, the the passes in LVM they're very they they do a lot of stuff. They're not the fastest thing in the world, maybe for single. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know how that's going to be to link it in. I mean, like total recompilation will take a long time. Like if you have a large program and you're recompiling it all, but 
Yeah, I don't know, man. The LVM's pretty good, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's been good at all the stuff I've looked at, but yeah. No, the speed of the REPL I don't remember as being what was being discussed earlier, but it's only fast if you write in XT Lang. The scheme part of the project is slow. I haven't looked at XT Lang, actually. That's interesting. Um, when it's compiling logic, it's good. Okay, I'm a little out of loop now. Right. So people are discussing the, the idea of LVM's recompile speed being slow. It's definitely, like, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement there, for sure. Um, like, the worst things I saw were generally to do with C++. Like, C builds were way faster than C++ builds, just because there wasn't all the extra shit that C++ piles on the language all the time. Um, yeah. The concept programmer videos. Oh, have you been watching some live coding stuff, Darius? Because that's really... The music live coding things, that's really cool. Um, if you have any good links for that, like good performances you enjoyed, please post them, because that's super cool. Um, Jason's saying, perhaps I misunderstood something. My understanding is they're transitioning to using LLVM mostly for the bootstrapping and interaction with C++ part for compilation. In part for compilation speed and in part for control really cool everything apparently everything andrew Sorensen does with extemporary is awesome i'll have to check that out i'm pretty sure i remember that name though that's really cool um nobody's nobody's lemons is just bringing up jai uh jonathan blow's language is very uh jonathan blow's uh, jai language is extremely fast at compiling despite using lvm ah that's half true uh the lvm backend is is considerably slower than their custom one. Their um, x86 um, emit like code emit backend is the one that's really fast. That's the hundred thousand lines a second currently they're at, and then they're aiming for a million lines a second, effectively compiled. Um, yeah, but it is a, it is very cool, um, and also the. Like a lot of the time currently on their um, x86 code emit is um, spent on the linking, um, so they're gonna do their own linker at some point as well. A lot there's yeah, there is so much stuff that can be done in that language to make things faster, and it's very inspiring. It's uh, yeah, I love watching those talks. Um, It's kind of moot to say that something is faster or slower than assembly when everything is compiling to assembly. It's like saying, like, ECL is faster than C when it's compiling to C. It's like, have you laid things out? Have you laid out your data and instructions in a way that your CPU can best take advantage of? That's really only the thing that's going to kind of dictate your speed, whether your language lets you do that. Oh, thanks for the link, Darius. That's cool. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm probably teaching you how to suck eggs, but... Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I find some of those kind of speed things weird these days. Anyway, the spawning thing. Um, we walk around, we spawn things at relative positions from uh, relative to God. So I don't see why we can't do the same with depth as well. Um, that does make default depth kind of odd. But then again, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. Maybe that's just the deal. Is that you just have to have everything relative to whatever's spawning. It does fit in better with other things. So I think I will leave a note to do that. So let's go. Um, add visual origin to actors. Was that really what we were looking at? Um, that doesn't seem right. Oh, you muppet. I got rid of the wrong thing. Here we go. Revision, that was the name of this thing. Okay, right, so... 
Ah, yes, you specify an origin, there's an origin, there's an origin, there's an origin, blah blah blah. That seems fine. I don't I don't think there's anything major there I need to look at. Um, you can see it get used in whoops, the wrong place there. Yes, yeah, so that, oh, no, we won't do that yet. But yeah, when you see the ghost actor, it's defined, its origin is minus 48. Um, so that's just moving it down by a certain number of units. So that's fine. 48 pixels, actually, I think. I think the units was in pixels, if I remember correctly. Okay, so I think this is fine. Okay, and then we have snapping position. Come on. Okay, so snap position, taking a position, snapping it to a grid size. Well, that's interesting, because that the fact that that's taking a position itself doesn't bode well. Unless it's definitely still relative to you. Yes. Okay, so the first thing it does is it takes this and takes the rotation from self and rotates the position to get the actual offset. So yes, this is still relative. Let's have a look at how snap position is used because I know that was in, um, in this. Okay. And this is for when... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this is... Oh, this code is such a mess. And it, this is something we'll have to go through uh, soon as well to find out all the horrible hacks that I had to do in here to get the thing to ship. Um, but snap position just seems to be... Let's have a look at tail size. What is that? Yeah, just 64, which was the size of the tile. Oh, yeah, and this was saying, hey, um, position, give me the position that is at my position, um, but assuming, but snapping to a grid that is this size. And the reason we have this is when we placed a bomb, you want it to slide into the center of the tile, not just be wherever you place it, because you might be walking between two tiles at the time so that again that seems fine that, that seems okay it's like you're dealing with a world space grid but that's kind of that's kind of all right I'll, I'll roll with that for now to review i don't think we're going to worry about that timers that's also interesting let's see what we got in there i'm pretty sure the implementation of this is going to be horrible um but that mm, other than that you just need to see, yeah, what it's like. What's going on in chat? Um, the concept programmer at Oscar. I really think I've seen that. Um, Bile Perrin! I'm seeing a Bile... Um, I, I wish I knew how to pronounce his name, but the dude's awesome. Um, yes, Messi Jan just linked that. I'm really proud of that because he uses Vario for his live coding stuff, which is super cool. Um, I've chatted with him very briefly a couple of times over emails. He's super nice. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, nice poem to poem. That's cute. Ah, oh, dear. Okay. Ah, da, 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 da. Oops. Right, so there is, what did we change? We added some timer stuff. There's an add timer, remove timer, and time P. So I assume this is a predicate, which I assume takes a timer. So yes, you add a timer with a certain name and an interval. And then you can say, hey, is it time? And then that's it. Okay, so that's 
basically the deal. Okay, let's see how that's used, because that the thing that's kind of weird about that is then it's suddenly, because you're giving it a name, you've got a global name. I suppose that means you can share the timer, but... Okay, so yeah, we've got add timer kick, and this is every 0.49 seconds. And that was that. <laughs> we were saying it was in time with the music. It's not. Um... And then during the main loop, it's saying, hey, if it's time um, for the kick, then um, start the shake. And the shake is just some animation that we play on the um, camera. Let's look at time P and see what else is going on. Um, oh, yes, and we also use um, time P for... See, this is interesting. We're having globals here as, in, as like resources. So here, when it's... When it's the time for the kick, we also and we move to the next frame in the animation of the mystery power up. Um, I should bring up Bomberman just so you can see it. But um, but yes, that's uh, that's how that's all in sync. So the shake and this is all in sync. I think there might have been some other ones as well. Oh no, I think it's just that mystery power up and and the screen shake are in sync. Yeah. So that's it. So I added it for that. I'm really not super stoked about the idea of a um, of this being a global resource. I mean, in this case, especially because because the god is the one that's defining it, it spawns the other things. So why couldn't it have just passed it to? Um, because it spawns these these power ups itself. It makes these tiles on load level, so it could have passed it down um, on spawn to this actor. So I'm not super sure about that, to be honest. I think I want to look into making that um, not a global resource. That's interesting. Do we make them? What do we make them? Because, like, again, they could just be some objects we pass around, but this language really was trying to keep things like you don't really have, you don't really think too much about instances of things you're passing around. Um, we have actors, so, and we have types of actors and you can spawn bullets you don't really keep hold of your bullet after you've spawned it though it's just you spawn this thing and off it goes so yeah i don't know i'm not sure what the best way of talking about this is yet um Like the, the 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 concept so far has been kind of you do you declare these things and you can see them in the code almost like physical objects like this is how a ship works and you go spawn a ship and off it goes Boom, one of them um, but you then you don't you don't like keep a reference to that thing you spawned you've just spawned it off into the world and away it goes so I don't know I don't know what I want to say about timers are timers some other kind of thing you define. Um, how do you refer to them? We don't really have a way of querying much about other stuff in general. Um, we don't. We don't really have a means of communication either. One thing that could be interesting is to do like an Erlang style inbox, so you can send a message to another actor. Um, it's like, hey, everything within five, like five feet of me, get this message. You know, um, 
that will be interesting. Um, we'll have to look into how that works, kind of like performance-wise and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, one of the fun things we could actually do one of these days is doing a um, quad tree implementation for optimizing some things. Especially if we want to start doing, um, if we wanted to do our own collision system, which isn't based on that, isn't pixel perfect, or if we wanted to do, um, yeah, these kind of queries within certain regions and affecting other things, we'll want to cut down the number of candidates pretty fast because again, there's a lot of objects that can potentially be going on at any given point. Let's uh, just bring it back up for an example, like. Yeah, it doesn't take long to start getting quite a few things happening. And so to keep that all fast, we need to think of good ways to keep the cost of communication very low. Um, but yeah, something for us to think about. Um, Fluxus. That rings bells as well. God, it's been a while since I went and looked at different kind of tools. Oh, yeah, man, I remember this. This has got the kind of block language, hasn't it, as well? Or was that just an experiment they did one time? Visual programming of schemes make techno music. Scheme bricks. Yeah, this is what I remember. Interesting. Oh, that's such a that's such a um rabbit hole to start thinking about going down is when you're like doing your own kind of uh, getting the code into the visual environment and then there's just so much things start coming out of it and it's like oh. I wouldn't mind, what I would like to do that actually is there is a, uh, a GPU accelerated terminal. I think it was um, Alacrity, 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 whatever. Um, there was an issue in here to make a standalone library of this, I believe. Can't remember, it's been around for a good few years. Um, probably pretty early actually. I get updates on it from time to time. Um, but if it was able to be its own library, we could render it to a texture and we could put the terminal inside the GLSL view, at which point we could run Emacs inside that terminal, right? And then we've got the full editor that we actually want to use um, in there. And that would be really neat. That, that would be the kind of way, if I was going to do that kind of um, environment for, yeah. Yeah, for, for bringing these things closer together. Because then it, like Emacs can just be in here somewhere. And we can tr try and blur that line a little bit more. Um, yeah. I think that could be interesting. We'll see. Was talking about Praxis. Oh, that's is that development that stalled now. That's a shame. Terminal and VR is the way. Panic did uh, something with VR. And scheme. Panic. It's in demo scene, dude. Um Yeah, that's really interesting. Right, let's review this a bit more. Okay, so timer, as we've already said, is currently a global resource, and we need to come up with ways of talking about these resources and something that fits with this. Um scale. I think this is probably going to be okay, and the, the reason again is it should be um, it should be local to oneself, right? 
So with slots, you have a scale. Um, and again, we've got this. So the idea of each actor having that data is fine. I've got no problem with that. And it makes sense to have that on the like actor definition itself. So if this is on, like doing it on define actor, yes. Being able to do it relative makes sense. I'm just not sure about this as an, uh, again, it, we just need to consider it seeing as it's another global thing. Let's look at, um, but again, it might be fine because you're only talking about yourself. It's not related to anyone else. So the scale is going to be based on you. And actually it's probably more useful to, uh, yeah, I need to think about that some more. Um, yes, to review. Scale is absolute. Isn't this okay? Um, the other thing really is we need to, our, our API is like assuming local everything, uh, but we don't really give good tools for handling local changes over time because those can compound pretty interestingly. Like if you, like if you're, um, yeah, anyway, yes. Those things can have some interesting behaviors and I don't think our API reflects that yet. So point at, um, that's another function. Let's go and have a look at that quickly. Okay, we're just incrementing the rotation by, um, so it's angle from, yes. So we're just incrementing the rotation based on some local uh, deviation. That's actually fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Whether the implementation is good or not, I'm not really too worried about right now, but um, API wise, it seems okay. Set position relative to, ooh, that seems interesting. Um, where do we use this? Is it in Bomber Chat? Nope. Orb? No. Wait a second then, where is this? What was this meant to be for? Okay, it's not used anywhere. That's interesting. Um, yeah, setting relative to someone else is kind of interesting because again, you have to have a reference to them. Like I'm gonna take that out for now. And um, seeing as it's not being used, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure about that at all. Oh, actually I should just make sure it wasn't being used in here. I don't think it was. Okay, mem copying re collision results into a CRA, I think that's just kind of like, that should be fine. That's really just details of how we um, handle the results from the collisions. Um, it would be nice to do these in better ways. I'm guessing, uh, where is that? So let's just have a look for the mem copy. Um, okay, with GPU array as C array, so it's taking the SSBO data, which holds the collision results, um, collision info IDs is calls, and it, find, it gets the pointer um, to that array that it's just got, and it mem copies that into the um, local results array. Um, yes, which is, again, is pre-allocated at the beginning, like when an actor is created, so it's not being recreated every frame. Um, I'm guessing that before this, it was doing it in some, oops, yes, looping across the thing and checking if something was greater than zero and, yeah, setting that result in there. So, yeah, it's just a bad idea, really. So, um... Yes, we, we were swapping out some, some Lisp code with some, some uh, CFFI code because it was faster. Eh, what can you do? Um, okay, per second, there's another thing. 
Let's check the thing that's gonna like because we're at half nine now. I guess this is gonna take us today to get through these things. Um, we'll start looking at bomber chap and looking at the mess that well probably start looking at orb actually because that's gonna have less probably have less issues because it's a simpler game. And then we'll review bomber chap next week, kind of do a post mortem on it and find all the ugly bits in the code, and then we'll take everything we've got and start kind of coming up with brainstorming new ideas for what to do to this engine. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, that's, um, yeah. Um, yeah, the uh, Nowhere game. Um, yeah, Panic is in uh, the guy who's making Scopes, the language. Yeah, it's not called Duangle anymore, is it? Oh, no, Duangle's the name of the company? Um... Yeah, Panic's talented dude. Um, his uh, his language is worth keeping an eye on. It's an interesting, another interesting approach. Um, he's definitely exploring a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of kind of like um, I can't remember to what degree he's doing kind of uh, lifetime tracking, but there's some of that stuff in there. But mainly, it's again, it's a it's a Lisp that's paired with LLVM during development time, so you can live compile things, but you don't have to ship LLVM into the final product, which is a problem, obviously. We in Common Lisp would have that issue because we can never strip the compiler out of the project. So, um, I mean, it's an advantage in some cases, but it's a disadvantage on anything with any kind of memory limitation. And uh, yeah, check out the amount of RAM you have on a like a um, on consoles. It's always a little bit less than you'd like, um, especially with all the other stuff you need to cram in there. Um, C two five two. Hello. Right, so this actually looks like it was just a rename from originally I had something that was about per frame and now we just want to say it's per second. Yeah, I think I was just fixing bad naming to be honest. Um, let's see how it was used. Per second, okay. Yeah, so it's just dealing with the fact that we've got um, the amount of time that passes per frame is not fixed. That's something we need to do at some point as well, which is to fix the time step of of this engine. Because um, at the moment it just takes like however long the last frame was, you know, that gives you the multiple that you multiply, um, your distance you're traveling or whatever. Um, so yeah, per second is just multiplying this number to make it a per second, 24 per second. Um, so it would be 24 frames per second, I guess. Oh, 24 units per second? Let's see. Oh no, 24 frames a second. That makes sense. Um, and then based on the direction, we're picking different... Um, yeah, we're picking different... Um, different tiles out of the um, Bomberman sprite sheet. So let's have a look. Where's the... Um, Yes, yeah, so you've got this sprite sheet. So this, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever. Um, or 8, can I not count? Oh, no, yeah, 0, zero to 7 on indices. So yeah, the first 8 are in this direction, second 8, third 8, all that kind of stuff. So um, per second, yes, we can see here 0 to 8 is this direction. Um, so yeah, it gets... It gets a direction, it turns it into an ID based on what direction you're walking in. It uses that to look up which range of um, sprites, I guess, from the sheet that we should be using. Um, yeah, and it carries on from there. That's nice. That's fine. I, I like, well, nice is probably stretching it, but I don't think that's harmful to what we're doing. There's also look. Okay. Depends how this is done. So here we are again, we've got um, a case where we're getting a position between two actors. This really doesn't fit our current model because we don't really have that thing of keeping reference to other actors and doing stuff with them. So that's rather odd. Um, 
but yes this was used by the logo oh yeah so this is w when i was getting towards the end um on the main menu i needed the logo and the um to start stuff to bounce in um and yeah I, I needed to lerp between two positions and we didn't have anything like that in our api because we don't we only talk about relative positions and if you're lerping between two things then your right your your position is constantly changing so that just kind of sucks so that's not good we have to do something about that to review um doesn't fit our model offset two this is going to be the same thing isn't it let's have a look at the face it's probably used in here yes um oh that's cute okay so it gets you the difference in position between yourself and another uh, actor so in this case it was relying on the fact that god is at the center of the world because uh, God has a position in this because it's just really another actor. So it used that as a hack. And so we're saying, remember we had that... Um, actually, I'll just bring it up now. Where is it? Because um, we're nearly done for the day. So let's do this. Actually, fuck it. Yeah, I know, I know. Fuck off. I need some coffee. One second. Whoop. While I caffeine, go do that. Okay, so now is this just being slow because capital isn't fast enough or has it messed up because other reasons no it's just being slow okay bomb oh chap run let's bring it up here yeah so we've got this effect oh yeah by the way this is what the question mark um turn into in that level format they just turn into these tiles that are constantly cycling between the different uh yeah power-ups <coughs> all right but yes yeah, so we've got this um we've got this pattern here and so what it does which is rather cute is it gets the distance from the tile to God, which is at the center of the world. Don't know what killed that. I think it could have been something to do with resizing. Oh, I know why, because when I press space, it lays a bomb. Um, it gets the distance to the center of the world, it takes the X component of that, so you get a horizontal factor. You multiply it by eight, and then you advance the frame by that amount. Oh, right, okay, so that sets, yeah, it does this at setup, so it it picks its starting frame to be based on the horizontal position and a multiple, and then it just advances the frame, and because of this, you get this pattern, and it was just a really simple way of getting something that looked kind of cool. It was like right at the end, because the game feels very flat unless you do some stuff, like add the, uh, add the shake that we had in originally and all that kind of stuff. Um, where did I have that shake? Yeah, here we go. So you have that along with the music and the um, tiles falling off and these little lights and stuff like this. And it just makes the whole thing. There's also a shine that goes across the power-ups. Um, like all of that stuff just makes it feel a bit better, even though it actually doesn't affect gameplay at all. Um, Well, fuck. There we go. Um, cool. Oh, for goodness sake. Get out the way. Um, all right.
right, so to review, yeah, offset to um, position between and offset do were necessary for bomber chap, but don't fit the model. God damn English, you're a you're a language that requires fiddling a lot for plurals. Um, okay, let's have a look what else. So that's offset two done, and then last minute collision fixes. These are. The only reason I'm going to look at these is because, again, the last minute, so it's very likely to be something wrong. Um, what was this? So there's a, now a collision result. Oh, yeah, because it's mem copying down the entire array, so it needs to know how many things in there need to be looked at, maybe? Not really sure. Um, Well, there's a fence, that thing. Okay, gets rid of the fence. That's interesting. Oh well, guess it wasn't needed there. I'm not sure. Oh, there's atomic exchange, but this looks like it's in the, uh... yes. This is in defund G, so this is in GPU code. We've got some atomic operations there, so that's not relevant in this case. Um, and this is the code that's looking at the collisions. Yeah, so I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not worried about, like, whatever the thing was, it was necessary at the time, but we'll, we'll probably need to go back and look at it, like all the code, but I don't think it's a problem with our fundamental model just now. So I don't think that needs to be looked at. Um, I also need to find out if anything uses this, because it's in the code base, but I don't know what actually does anything with it. Um, no, it doesn't seem to be anything that's actually using it. So let's go and take this out, and this out, and this out. Okay, so we've got things to fix. We need to work out answers for the kind of these questions. We've got code quality cleanup. Yeah, there's just like there's some globals and stupid shit in there that need looking at, and that's fine. Um, we've got ugly hacks. We'll need to look at these for sure. We haven't looked at those today, but we'll definitely get to them probably um, next week along with um, digging into Bomber Chap itself and seeing all the horrible hacks we had to do to get that to work. Um, let's bring up Orb, since that's a simpler game. And then we'll spend the last few minutes just kind of chatting and chilling out and um, starting to look at Orb, but I doubt we'll get very far in that, so that's not a big deal. Again, any questions or anything like that on or off topic, I'm happy to at least consider not answering. Uh, but yeah, no, sh shout them out and uh, we'll do some stuff. Let's have a look. So it'll be in base. The buttery biscuit base. Right. Orb. Orb. Or is it just run? Yeah, it's just run. Bum, 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 bum. And we'll, um, oh, shit. Cool. Right, let's leave that over there and start seeing what we have. Off topic, what kind of coffee are you drinking? No idea. <laughs> I've got some espresso beans I just grind up and throw in the filter coffee machine and whatever that comes out. The uh, the black goo that keeps me going. Bug number 13. How would you implement a system for saving the state of the game? Depends on the game. Depends on what needs saving. There's almost no generic solutions to, like, well... It's, it's rubbish to say. You can come up with general solutions for things, but they tend to be inferior in every way to a system that actually focuses on what your game requires. 
because you end up having to develop and maintain things that your game isn't used for. And in, games are kind of interesting, unless you're doing something like an MMO or some kind of service type thing, um, your game just doesn't last that long. And so it's... There are some... There's some bits of functionality that can kind of be shared libraries and things like this. Maybe your animation system will last a few games or something like this if you're doing a similar kind of game. Um, Maybe like, oh, we do... Yeah, we're doing kind of first and third person like AAA games and we have a good mesh animation kind of like skidding system and all that kind of stuff. Maybe the majority of that survives between a few games, but yeah, it's kind of tricky. Messi Han saying save Lisp and die. Yeah, that's one way. Like 13 is saying, I'm currently working on a rather big and complex test of text adventure and I'm looking for a way to save the database. Yeah, I mean, like, what's it stored as? Like, I mean, if it, if it, like, how, how, is it all just, if it's just a big hash table, then, I mean, you could just serialize that out or, like, because, um, and if it's just lists, I mean, you can use read. You can just, like, format it to it like open a file stream and write the whole thing out it wouldn't be it wouldn't it's not the sanest way but also if it's fast enough again for a text adventure there'll be a certain amount of data but not so much yeah it really depends i'm interested in hearing more though for sure okay so right at the top of all at the get-go we've got the fine audio so there already like when we did this kind of like when i hacked in the audio system we're already seeing here some other way of defining resources other than define actor and define god so this suggests we're going to have more top level resources like this and that might inform something else so here we've got, um, we dedicate 20 channels to bullet noises and um, two channels to the reset noise. Every time something hits, you get this kind of, this noise that plays, the kind of failure noise when it resets. So, and then I guess when you say play or something like this, yeah, you play track, oh no, let's play track. Um, play sound, yes, you specify which collection of channels you want to play into. So you're like, oh, I'm going to play this sound into reset. And um, yeah, that's referring to this. So it'll pick the oldest. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll pick the oldest um, channel that was used and you and reuse that one. So if there's already two things playing, then it will kill the thing that was playing first, and yeah. Okay, so, what is that? LIFO or something? No. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> there's a pool of stuff there. Um, then we've got, immediately we've got a bunch of top level stuff. We've got an orb, we've got a ship, so already, like, even though every, things aren't meant to be talking about all the other uh, things in the world, we've got, um, we're obviously hacking around that. So let's see where orb is used. Orb was used... It's like, hey, if the orb already exists, kill it. And then spawn an orb. Oh yeah, we don't really handle the case of resetting the game very well in um in our little engine, I don't think, so I have to think about that. Um Oh yeah, and this is like, hey, there's no orb, so don't fire. I don't know what cases we wouldn't have the orb. Maybe that was in an earlier version of the game that the orb could spear for a while. Or maybe it was that it hadn't been spawned yet and it was freaking out. That shouldn't be the case though, really. But the main thing here is it wants to move towards the orb and turn towards the orb. So this thing gets given a kind of position and direction, then it slowly curves into it. Um, I 
nowadays it just kind of flies straight at it. I think it used to... Yeah, see, this this is coming in. I think it used to start at a random position, so it would kind of spiral in. But I think it was just too many different concepts in one game. Keeping track of the colors and the colors of the walls was enough. So having this is just like a extra fuck you. And um, yeah, having them spiral in just made it too much, I think. I can't remember now. Okay, it's been, been 10 months, hasn't it? So I don't really know. Um, so again, we're, we're hacking around that. And then we've got ship as well, so... And again, this is the same thing. It's just like, it's killing it if it exists. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we've got this reset function here. So this suggests that we want to be able to reset the game in some way, or reset something, um, and have some things taken care of. And we don't have that functionality in our little engine yet, so that might be something to add. Um, yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, see. Okay, so the main reason we've got, like the, the first reason we've got orb and ship here are so we can reset. So by implementing some kind of reset mechanism into the engine, we can at least get rid of that reason for it. The other one for having orb was um, because of this. And we already have a ticket to, we already have a ticket to look at that. Um, Metian, the reason the uh, both of the bars um, disappear is because it's resetting. It's starting this counter again. So technically, well, really, it should be a lot more dramatic that you failed. Um, but uh, but yeah, really, this guy should go away as well because it's kind of unfair. That should actually like veer off and fly away off screen. Um, yeah, but the idea is you're restarting each time. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like there's a consequence, you know? Well, other than the fact you lose your score. Um, oh, that reminds me, the score. This is a complete hack, if I remember correctly. Um, where is it? Um... No, that's a wall timer. Yes. Right, so this... What is this? Yeah, so this is advancing the frame. It's flooring this number counts. Okay, so why does that ever change? Because that just seems like it's returning zero. What the fuck is this? Who knows? <laughs> How does this work? Oh, right, okay, yeah, it's, it's specifying this multiple and it also passes in best and since. Okay, so it passes in those functions. Those are just default values. Okay, yes. Fair enough. Um, right, so. Yeah, we, we need a text system is really the thing. Like, the, having to hack this together out of a bunch of actors is really stupid. I need a text system. Um, Maybe we can resurrect our um, multi-channel sign distance field code for that. Um, hmm. 
Metian saying, I mean exactly as it hits. In that case, I don't understand. But it's that's just me missing some context there. I think you're probably spot on with something there. Okay, so yes, text is really gash, so we need to do something about that. Let's carry on down here. Oh, actually, let's not carry on down here, because we've actually reached 10 o'clock. So, um... I'll give you 30 seconds more for any random questions, and then I am going to head off. Thank you so much for dropping by. Uh, this has been cool and very chill. Um... If you guys are down with it, I'd like to do more of this next week. Just keep on kind of for the next, basically, next few weeks. Um, just to dig into this 2D engine and do little things and, and start working out what we can do to fix it up. Um, and then we'll do some stuff with it um, around the game jam time. Um, in the middle of that, if I say if I get the type system stuff done, I might do a kind of like one episode where we just fuck around with that. Because as soon as we get, like I say, I've said this a bunch of times already, but as soon as we get, um, as soon as we get that stuff working, we can start looking at, uh, we can, I can make a small standard library, we can start looking at compile transforms, because, like, optimization transforms are really fun, or at least they seem to be, to be so far. Right, thank you so much, have a good night, peace.